Hi everyone, in this uh, short video I just want to build on what we talked about in some of the videos about the marginal product of capital and what happens to it as the capital labor ratio changes. So in the last video we did, I showed that the marginal product of capital at point B was greater than the marginal product of capital at point A. Okay. Now we also know that the principle of diminishing marginal returns applies, which means as you add more and more capital goods, the marginal product of capital declines. Okay? So think back to that ditch digging example. Now the question is, if I want them, so I've got two different production functions here, one with a relatively low technology and one with a relatively advanced technology up here. The question is, if I'm looking for the point on production function two, where the marginal product of capital is exactly equal to um, what it is at point A. In other words, I'm looking for the case where the marginal product of capital, and I'll call it point C, is exactly equal to the marginal product of capital at point A, and point C is going to be on production function 2. The question is, where is point C going to be? Okay. Well, point C is obviously not going to be right here at point B because we know marginal product of capital at point B is greater than it is at point A. So the question then comes to this. Do I want the capital stock to shrink? So do I want to be at a capital labor ratio, say, down here? Or do I want to be at a capital labor ratio over here to the right? And the key to figuring it out is the principle of diminishing marginal returns. And so if you think about what that principle says, and that says that holding everything else constant, such as the level of technology, as you add more and more capital goods, the, cap uh, the marginal product of capital declines. So if you start off at point B, and you start adding capital goods, the principle of diminishing marginal returns applies. So as you start moving up along your production function, the marginal product of capital is going to start decreasing. That means if you want to find point C, such that the marginal product of capital at point C is the same as it is at point A, you're going to have to end up at a point like this. We'll, say, we'll pretend C is right here. capital labor ratio 2. Okay? And at, cap, at point C, if you were to draw the tangent line in there, it's going to be pretty close to what it is at point A. I didn't eyeball it perfectly, but I got pretty close. And I think you can see the point that if the marginal product of capital is right here at point A is less than it is up here at point B, then you've got to, due to the principle of diminishing marginal returns, you've got to accumulate more and more capital goods to drive the marginal product of capital down so that they are equal. Okay? Believe it or not, this is going to be an important point um, when we talk about the catch-up phenomenon and why we think um, differences in labor productivity have to be the causes of differences in uh, the standard of living over time, or across countries. All right, so I just wanted to make that point, which is if you're on two different production functions, one a low one, the other a high one, let's say due to differences in the level of technology, if you have exactly the same capital labor ratio, then the marginal product of capital is going to be higher on the higher production function. And, but on that higher production function, as you accumulate more and more capital goods, the marginal product of capital declines until you reach um, a point where the marginal product of capital at point C is exactly equal to the marginal product of capital at point A. Okay, so I think I can stop there and uh, we'll pick it up uh, next time.